folks, we're back here on the Boss Man Show with the Pastor of Pain, former NFL linebacker Corey Miller of the Giants and the Vikings here with me. Also as a minister of Giants for Christ and part of the Unpacking It Ministries as well. Corey, good to talk to you, man. How are you doing? I'm blessed, doing great. Uh, glad to be on here with you and, and hanging out with you this afternoon. And, and uh, hey, you know, the sun is shining and, and uh, the Lord has given us good health and good breath. I'm doing good. Yes, indeed, Corey. Well, first tell us about your faith and being an NFL player, a man of faith and going through your struggles and trials, tribulations and becoming a pastor and a minister. Now, tell us about that journey that brought you from the NFL and that whole world of football, your faith and now being the pastor of pain as you are now. <laughs> well, bro, it's, you know, just like anything, uh, it's been a journey. Uh, it's been a, a, a difficult journey, but yet rewarding uh, at the same time. Uh, you know, growing up in South Carolina, a small town, my town is called Pageland. We're known as the watermelon capital of the world. And, you know, big family that, that was raised on faith. My father was a deacon for over 60 years. Uh, my mom was a missionary. You know, we had a, a, a family that we all sang. We traveled with our church and we went to different churches, you know, little country towns and singing a gospel music on Sunday. So, <clears throat> you know, it was still to me at an early age. Um, but just like anybody else, you know, I was a young kid playing sports and, you know, I wanted to do me. I wanted to be, you know, who Corey wanted to be for, for a lot of years. And and uh, so I did those things. I always had the foundation. I always had a, the base uh, yes, of, of faith. You know, I knew, I believed, I, I believed in the Lord. I believed Jesus came and died. I, all of that, Romans 10 and 9, you asked me, yeah, are you a Christian? Yep. You know, I go to church, I do this, I you know, I will give you all those answers. I go to chapel, I go to Bible studies at FCA. I, I did all those things, you know, through high school, through college at the University of South Carolina, and even with the New York Giants. But one day, I remember my chaplain, uh, Dave Bratton, was asking me to go hear a guy by the name of Pat Kelly speak. He was a, uh, a MLB baseball player. And I didn't want to go. It was a day off on a Tuesday in the NFL. You know, man. Oh, yeah. I want to do my thing. I got my bands, my my my, my 300 bands back then with the AMG stars on them. I want to get my system right. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go hear no dude talk about the Lord. Not this day. And so I was like, nah, I ain't going to go, Dave. And, and so I had my car in the, the, the uh, radio shop. They was putting the new speakers and things in there. And, man, it was just like something was so deep in my spirit. Like, you know, when you, you start feeling anxious, like, man, I, I'm supposed to be doing this. Oh, yes. And I, and yeah. And so I had to stop the guy. I said, listen, man, I'll bring the car back. I got to go. So I, the place probably 45 minutes in New Jersey somewhere, South Jersey. So I got my car and I drove up there, listened to this guy speak. And, man, it was if the Lord himself was speaking to me. And, and so at the end of his uh service I you know had an altar call and I, and I and I officially went up to give Jesus my life and now again grew up in a Christian home sang in the choir did Christmas uh, uh, Easter speeches you name it all the the religious stuff that goes along oh yeah I did all that but I never have really truly accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior <clears throat> and I did that day and, and praise God for that. And it was a it was a roller coaster, man. I was in the league. I'm making money. I'm trying to fight these demons, these women. You know, I want money. I got you know just a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. and, and and my life was really just up and down for a lot of years, man. And and to one day, to fast forward my testimony, uh, after I retired, I had a men's clothing store, big and tall, because I wanted to. You know, we all dressed, and I saw the athletes dressed and buying thousand dollar shoes, five thousand dollar suits, and you know. And I went into business with this guy, and, and man, he stole from me, and, and, and I got sued by companies, and man, my money was going out the door just like the wind was taking my money, and, and I and I just got in a bad spot, started drinking again, started partying again, cheating on my wife, committing adultery, living a lifestyle of just, man, I was a prodigal son. And, and so I went on tour with my good friends Hooting the Blowfish for about six, seven months, just hanging out, doing whatever I wanted to do. And when we came back to Charleston, um, and I was so depressed and, and I got so down, the devil was telling me to kill myself. Why, why live? Why do this? I'll never forget that. One of the darkest places that I've ever been in. But I heard, you know, this lady by the name of uh, Helen Bailey used to sing, uh, sing this song. But I had a praying grandmama 
<laughs> and I knew enough to call on the name of Jesus. And brother, my grandmother, great grandmother told me when I was a little boy at seven, eight years old, told me my mom, my dad, she rocked in her old rocking chair. She said, Ethel, God got plans for this little boy. God's going to use this little boy. And, and that night when I was in Charleston with that gun in my hand, thinking about taking my own life, I heard my grandmother's words echoed deep in my spirit. Don't you do this. God got a plan for your life. And so, brother, I got up the next day, left Charleston, came back to Columbia, South Carolina. The Lord put in my heart this ministry, Giants for Christ, you know, God's like, I had to take you through it. I'm taking you through mm -hmm. this training camp in order so that you can serve and do the things that I've caused you to do before you was in your mama's womb. I already caused you to, to preach this gospel. I've called you to take this word to the streets. And, and so it took all that to get me to a place to, to really humble myself and accept the Lord and say, Lord, I'll do and I'll go where you tell me to go. So that's that's why they call me the pastor of pain today. That's why I'm preaching the gospel today because God had this, this ordained for me for, for a lot of years before I was in my mom's womb. I said, even before mom and dad might've went to that Motel 6, God had a purpose and a plan for this young boy right here. And Corey, it's, my, it's funny you say that because for me, Corey, 2006 in October was when I got my wake up call. You know, I was not living right. I was at Tennessee State University in, in Nashville, having a blast, you know, slanging drugs, having a good time. But I was going to go back home to Atlanta on a run, right? Mm -hmm. To pick up some more to bring back to sell at school, right? Right. And I had a test that day. And I chose to take my test that day. Had I not did that, I would have been in jail. Life mm -hmm. over. 19 years old because my man got hit with some felony charges of having all them drugs in the back of that car. And man. it was going to be four of us and three of them got caught. And I was the one to take my test that day because the teacher right, wouldn't let, 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 let you make up your test. Right. So mm -hmm. I had to do that. So it was like, it was, it was all guys, all part of it. Our ancestors, every, whoever had this pain on me that day, the Lord and my ancestors fire, just had me take that just to not risk an F because my life has been over at 19 years old, 2006, in October. But it took Praise that God. test to save me from that bad situation. Mm. So I can just look back. Yeah. God is good, isn't he? Yes. God, see, God, God, even in our mess, brother, even when we're purposed in our heart to do wrong, to go commit sin, to live out sin, God already knew. So God will set up a roadblock. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about Jonah when you're talking about your story. You know, God, hey, I need you to go to Nineveh. I need you to tell these people. I need you to preach to these people. But, you know, Jonah wanted to do his own thing, and but God had a roadblock. You know, no matter where he tried to go, how he tried to run, God used the fish to swallow him up. Not to kill him, but to get him back on his, 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 his purpose. And that's what God does with us. You know, when you got a call in your life, yeah, God may let the cage get rattled. God may let, like, I had to fall deep. I had to fall deep. I had to fall from grace. I had to fall from being a man with, with money and, and millions of dollars. I had to lose in order that I may gain mm -hmm. the true love of the Lord, the true understanding of what it meant being at the footprints of the cross of Jesus. So that's that's good, you know, because God could have said, hey, I'm going to take my hands off of you. and but But his hands of mercy was on you that you took that test. And you did not go make that trip. God's hands of mercy was on me numerous times, driving drunk. You know, when police could have pulled me over, I could have wrecked, hurt myself, hurt somebody else. You know, sleeping around, I could have caught disease. I, God hand of mercy. Man, and I'm just so thankful and, and grateful because his hand of mercy, which the Bible says is new every morning. New every morning, brother. And, and he gets us back on a street called straight. He'll get us on that street called straight. 
you got that right, Corey. And I tell people all the time, and my, my story, like I told you that, you know, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at today mm -hmm. had I made a different decision. And that life is about decisions we make. And and God can guide you those decisions to yes. do the right thing. Because, you know, Corey, I tell people all the time, I want to go home with them just to go home because I had me a little something and say, you don't want to tap while I was there. <laughs> so right. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I wanted to go, but yeah. at the same time, I, I, I said, I don't want to fail either. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I chose doing my test. And, the, and when they didn't come back, and I'm like, they're not back. Then I got a call that, you know, your boys got locked up in mm -hmm. Gordon County, Georgia, which is on the way between Nashville and above Atlanta. Head, it's heading to Chattanooga almost. Gordon County where Calhoun is where right the outlet's at. And I was like, wow, that was the Lord. So that really changed my life, Corey. And yeah. the other thing about it was that I was able to spend the last week's month. My, my uncle died November the 5th of that year. So I was just spending the last few weeks sitting with my, with my uncle I already cared about before he had a heart attack and died, not knowing mm. he was going to die. So I look at the big picture of it all, Corey, that that one decision, God's hand of mercy on me, saved me to where I'm at today, to have the show I have today, the career I have and everything. That one day in October, early October, that could have changed my whole life forever. But God has hand on me for do, to do bigger things, which I'm doing today, yeah. as, as we you and I speak today. Praise God. I mean... You know, we all have that testimony, right? Uh, praise God. I, my, my devotional today on unpacking it, it was about just praising God when you lose. You know, it's easy to praise God when things are going great. Yes. It's easy to praise God when the confetti is falling on you in the Super Bowl, when you've won and you can do the little confetti angels. It's easy to say, Lord, I thank you. I want to give God the glory, you know, the head of my life. And you, you know, It's easy to point to the sky when I made a 50-yard field goal to score a touchdown and say, Lord, thank you. You know, but what about when you lose? Got that about, right. What about when you're in the struggle? What about when you fail? What about, you know, when you fail that test? What about, you know, when God allow? certain things that happen that that's not fun. Do you still praise him? Do you still give him glory? See, and that's what God wants. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord, Psalm 34, at all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth, on my lips, you know, continually, all times, not, not when just things are good, not when not when things are just great or, or you know, when my money's flowing right, my bills are paid, my everything is great, my marriage is great, my relationships are great. He says, bless him all the time. If we can never get into that habit of just saying, Lord, I want to bless you. I want to bless you because you're worthy. Because he, he's worthy. See, you know, and if you can't find nothing today, in your life that, that 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 you think you know he's not worthy just look back look back at the, with your testimony look back what he kept you from look back at the, the 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 seen and the unseen dangers just look back you can find something to say god i pray you you can just easily say i put my foot on this floor this morning and stood up out in this bed god i give you glory so so we all have a, a reason to to bless him all the time because he's such a a good merciful, loving, caring God. Even when we're stupid, even when we act up, even when we turn our back on him, even when we fail him and disappoint him, God's hands of grace and mercy yes, is sir. still there. Yes, sir, Corey. I must ask you, man, you know, having your son in the NFL, how much of a blessing is that for you? Uh, and he's following your footsteps. And he had the talent that God gave him. And he's watched his father. Today's in the NFL playing for the Panthers as you represent them as we speak yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about having your son in the, in the league now. Well, you know, it's it's just one of them things where you just go, wow. Wow, God. You know, um, I got two sons, Corey Jr. and Christian is my youngest that plays for the Panthers. And both were stellar athletes. And I actually thought Corey Jr. would be the one that would be that because he always embodied that that uh, gift that you know that could do anything with a ball, kind of like I was growing up. You know, Christian was a 
he loved rock, the skateboards and turn flips. And he was just like, you know, a different kind of kid. But when he got eighth grade, seventh, he started this football thing, man, started to click. Ninth grade, he started to sprout up and long. And, and he played quarterback, and they put him on defense. And, man, he started rushing the passer. And, man, everybody in the country was like, wow. You know, the game was evolving to this edge rusher type dude. And that's who he was. Looked like a basketball player. People would say, you play football? He's 6'4", about 2'10". You know, he's like, yeah, I'm a linebacker. But, man, he can rush the pass. But, it, it, you know, one of my greatest joys a couple years ago in, a, uh, in Alabama on draft day, and it was a little bit disappointing because we thought it was going to go early, a little bit earlier. But you know, he was coming off that hamstring tear. Uh, so – he was getting back healthy, so it dropped him a little bit. But, man, to hear Ron Rivera and Marty Herney call him that day, and, and just something, again, that God has spoken over this young man's life. I remember taking my sons to church with me to hear this pastor, and we walked in a little bit late, and the pastor stopped the sermon and said, that, that boy, that little boy right there, is God going to use him to play in the NFL? <laughs> he's probably, you no, know, 12 at the time, whatever it was, 11. He's going to play He gonna play pro ball. I'll never forget that. So when we were down there in Tuscaloosa and that phone call came in and he was on that phone, I got a picture, actually I videoed it. And, and uh, just that whole moment was surreal, man. And I just started crying because it was, you know, I know how hard it is. It's hard. You know, less than 1% get this opportunity. Out of all the great college football players, less than 1% get, get this opportunity. And, you know, for me, it was difficult. And to see now your seed that God has blessed you with going through the same thing. I mean, I trained them. I got them. I did all the on-the-field training. So I, we spent so much time together in the process and just, you know, it was just, man, God. Wow, God. And he's such a good, humble kid. And, and so I was so happy for him, man. I I, I cried, and, and um, I just went – I had to go outside because he was on the phone and all this stuff. So I just went outside, and I just started worshiping the Lord and thanking him for giving him, Christian, an opportunity to do something he really dreamed of. And uh, and he's doing it today. So it's such a blessing. Of course, you know, defense, Ty Bowles is playing against – the Chiefs was amazing. And just think about how he stopped Aaron Rodgers cold and Mahomes back with those schemes, that fresh front four they have with Pierre Paul and Shaq Barrett and Dominic Sue inside and Vey as well. And the man, Devin White, what a stud, man. That defense is amazing that Bowles and Aaron's put together out there in Tampa Bay there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the old adage, right? Defense wins championships. And you know, I know Tom Brady gets all the glory. He gets all the, the all, all the, the the hype, and and rightfully so. Seven Super Bowl wins as a starting quarterback, unbelievable. But when you talk about this fifty-five Super Bowl fifty-five, that was won because of defense. Oh, yeah. Those guys you just mentioned, a young, aggressive secondary, and a stellar game plan by by Bowles, right? You know, not letting anything get behind us. We're going to protect the sidelines. We're going to funnel everything in the middle of the field. And, oh, by the way, we got some dudes up front. We don't need the blitz. We can just rush out four guys. And then we got two linebackers that are like assassins. They run and hit. They tackle well in the open field. They don't have a problem. I'll put my linebacker out there on, on Travis Kelsey. Why? Because we're going to be physical at the line of scrimmage. We're going to post them up. We're going to stab them. We're going to disrupt the timing because we understand that the front four can get there. The, it was amazing to watch. It really was because I was going, wow. I didn't expect it. I expected Kansas City to, I called them Ferraris. I expected those Ferraris to just roll, roll, because that's what happened the first time, turning backflips in the end zone. I mean, but they adjusted. They made the changes. And, and, and listen, you know, Patrick Mahomes did everything a man could do. Uh, three starting offensive linemen out of the, the you know, listen, that, if I'd have been smart, I would have said, whoa, three guys out? Oh, that ain't going to be good going up against that defense. You know, but 
you thought, well, Patrick Mahomes, he can move around, he can buy time, they got trickeration, blah, blah, blah. Well, they'll figure it out. Andy Reid, Eric B. Enemy, they'll figure it out. But shoot, man, that was a, a heck of a game plan by the defense. Tom Brady was efficient. He does what he does. He doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't make mistakes. Um, the other thing that I will add to this, boss man, is that, you know, the first half, I was a little mad because I didn't like all the calls. Oh, yes. And I thought that really, I, I thought this really played a big, big difference in this game, right? Because you, I can go and say, hey, you know, 14 points came off of some bad calls. One right before the half where they just feet tripped up. They don't make that call. The ball is overthrown. Yeah, that's, 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 that's uncatchable ball there. Yeah. I mean, you give them that one and then you have a holding call when they get the interception. And you give them the ball back. I mean, so those things were critical. And again, I'm not saying that Kansas City would have won the game had those things not been called, but they were very instrumental, mm -hmm. I think, especially that for the game would have been a lot closer with Kansas City getting the ball to start the third. I think maybe we might have seen a closer game at least. And – Byron Leftwich going with the short passing game, the screens, the inside zones, the outside zones, some combo blocking. It forced Spatnos to play straight up. No blitzes. It couldn't really be exotic as he usually likes to be because there's a head of change the whole time with Fournette and Rojo who has an extra burst that Fournette doesn't have. So I feel like right. the game plan for them offensively was efficient. Screens, play action, run the ball, inside zone, outside zone, combo blocks some crackbacks here and there and keep them off balance, then flash into Gronk or Bray or to Antonio Brown whenever he got to get him down the field there. Yeah, I think when you when you're able to run the football, the success that Tampa had opened up a lot of things for that offense because that play action pass which Tom Brady loves. I mean, so now you talk about the tight end game, you talk about backs out of the backfield. I mean, and that opened things up. They didn't hit a ton of deep balls down the field, but it loosened up the defense of Kansas City, as you said. They couldn't be as aggressive as they wanted to be. Uh, and, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, Tom Brady had – he was too clean. I mean, you can't go into a game with a quarterback like that, as smart as he is, who's able to dissect defenses. You cannot go in, in a game like that and say, man, this guy, you're not going to have any dirt on his jersey. No way. You got – my. I'm. you know, my mindset as a defensive player, I played all these years and coached some. I mean, listen, I'm coming at you. Okay. I'm going to dictate what happens in this game. I'm not going to let an offense dictate what we do. We're going to we're going to make you play to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That means we're coming at you. That's why I want to get me a couple of corners. I want to get me some safeties that can sideline to sideline, run, good tackles, linebackers the same, some D linemen that know how to rush the passer. I want some good blitzes. Listen, we're going to take away that passing window, especially when I got a quarterback. That's all he loves to do. He wants to play the game in here. He wants in this box right here. So you have to go in the mindset. We got to take away the passing window. We got to make things muddy for him. And we got to hit him. I don't care if we don't sack him. We got to hit him. He's got to get helped up from his old lineman. He's got to start looking around, hear footsteps. That's what Kansas City did not do. And, and to me, that was a problem. And, you know, now you allow them to run the ball, how they, I mean, however they want to run. They got dominated on both sides a lot. Oh, you know, yes. At the end of the day, it was domination in the trenches, period. Both oh, sides. Yes. Both sides, offensively, defensively, they were dominated at the line of scrimmage. And if you can't, if you can't control the line of scrimmage in a big game like that, you're not going to win. What are your thoughts on the golf and Stafford trade? I think that, I think the pundits are getting it wrong. It was a Stafford, one out three for Stafford, and a first round pick for taking on the bad contract of Jared Goff. It wasn't two first round picks. It was one out three for Stafford and a one for that horrible golf contract. And I think the Eagles are trying to play that game with Wentz, but you know it's not going to happen. Then right. it makes me wonder, but Deshaun Watson, three ones right. maybe for him, wherever he wants to go. So what are your thoughts on this Chris Cole quarterback uh, carousel that's muddy right now, <laughs> Corey? <laughs> Man, I, listen, the, the, the Matthew Stafford deal, I, I like the fact that he goes to a team with a great defense. They have that already out in L.A. I still think they need some weapons. I still think they need another receiver or so. But 
Yeah, I don't know about Detroit. I mean, golf is a young player. He's been to a Super Bowl. He's had some success at an early age. Um, and you can build around him. I think it's good for him because he get a fresh start. And, you know, you got a new coach. You got, you got a new staff. And you come in and you can build around him. You know, Stafford's older. This team is already built for Super Bowl. So I think it's a great fix for I mean fit for him. I do. So I think I think the Rams are, are continue to do what they're doing in a very tough division, by the way. You know, with Seattle and Russell Wilson, and you got the Cardinals. Yeah, I think San Francisco, they're gonna be back healthy, you know, with Garoppolo and those guys. So we're gonna see. That's gonna be boy, that's gonna be something to watch the uh, next football season. Deshaun Watson, you know. Would I give up the farm for him? Which you're going to basically have to give up the farm for him. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm thinking about this team right here, who who I think has some weaponry that if you implement this kid, it could take them to a whole nother level. Now, will this team like the Panthers be willing to give up, you know, two, three first rounders, Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, whoever else, for Deshaun Watson? Maybe. Because I think this, they're, the Panthers are in a place that they can make a move. Drew Brees is gone. Who knows what's going to happen with New Orleans? Atlanta's aging Atlanta. out. Yeah, Matty Ice getting old. They got new coaches, you know. So Tom Brady's still there. But, hey, you know what? They played they play Tampa the first, one time. At least pretty tough. I mean, so you can you can get in that mix. So I think, I think you know, if you're the Panthers, I think go for it. Why not? I mean, you got Christian McCaffrey. You got some good young wide receivers out there. You got a defense that was salty last year with a bunch of young guys that 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 that's gonna grow up. You know, you gonna. So, I hope they make a run at him. I really do. They're gonna have to give up a lot, but you got some. You you've had some good draft classes. You got some good young players. Go for it. So yeah, yeah, yeah right. he's worth it. I mean, the dude is the dude is special. Yeah, I, I'm looking at Chicago, the Jets, the Panthers, the Dolphins. Those are teams I'm looking at closely. I feel like Wentz is going to, to the Colts. I feel like that's where he's going to the Colts. And so I think the four teams are the Bears, the Jets, the Dolphins, and Panthers for Deshaun Watson. I feel like the Saints don't have the cap room to do it because of Drew Brees' contract and mm -hmm. Winston and Hill. So those are the well, four I think, that I think, I think the Saints love Winston. I think the Winston's going to be the starting quarterback. Oh, with that talent? I mean, Jake, Jacob, he can spin the thing now. I mean, you know, people are 30 and 30 last year in Tampa, but the man ain't really have no help. He so, was told and, to throw the ball in the traffic. No, right, risk, no you, biscuit. Just throw it down there. I mean, <laughs> they played that way. So it's not that everybody wants to blame Jameis, but no, that was that's the way they were playing. You know, they changed it with Brady, but listen, Jameis can play. And if you give him those guys that he's got there, whew, oh, yeah. I think I think the Saints gonna be fine. Last one for you, Corey. The Atlanta Falcons here, right here in my hometown, my backyard. ATL. Yeah. Yes, let's talk about them. So we know Julio and Matt are just back when 2021 due, due to the cap consequences of that situation. But do you think the Falcons draft fields at number four to be Matt's heir apparent? And defensively, uh, Dean P's not played the Dan Quinn Seattle defense. So I feel like we're going to be in a situation like, like the Cowboys were, where it's a year where the Mike Nolan's coaching a team that does not fit the scheme. So yeah. I'm worried about the Falcons defense again because you're leaving, losing the, the Dan Quinn cover three, cover one scheme to go to Dean Pieces, which is multiple and blitzes all the time, three, four, four, three blitzes all the time. So I'm concerned defensively, but offensively, we got Julio, Matt, Ridley, running back, who knows. But <laughs> I'm, yeah. I just see the Falcons being 30 place at minimum in the, in the South next year. Yeah, I don't feel nothing with, with the Falcons right now. I, I don't. Um, I, I you know, Matty Ice, I totally respect him. I mean, what a great pro. Um, and they had the opportunities, right? The Falcons, <laughs> they've had so many, they had the chances and blew them. I was um, there in Houston. It's, it's the worst trip back home, Corey, ever. <laughs> yeah, that was hard. That was a, that, that was one. I'm like, man, they got this thing is a wrap, but like, what? What? Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think, you know, of course, you know, I'm a Julio. I'm a Calvin Ridley. I'm my son, Alabama. I'm 
those dudes I know because they play with my son. Um, I'm all about about those dudes. I think I, Matty I still got some stuff in the tank. I think offensively they're going to be fine. And I think you're, you're spot on with the defense. I, I just don't know. I, you know, you asked me besides Grady Jarrett, um, who who's the guy on defense that like, I Deion I Jones, forty five. Deion Jones is kind of something, but they, yeah, and they I'm, paid yeah, him man, too much know. money. And like so I'm just saying, they don't have anybody. Several guys you can point to and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Neil's always injured. I love him as a person. He's always injured. So I think they gotta they gotta draft defensively. Uh, you know, they can go get fields at four, not nah, get air parent to, you know, but they still got to get some defensive guys. If you're going to oh, win, yeah. you better get, you better be able to stop people. In the day's game, where offenses spread you out, nickel and tempo and, and RPOs, and if you don't have some defensive players that can run and, and, and some secondary guys that can cover, you ain't going to win. Yeah. I, I, I think the Falcons could slip behind the Panthers. I, I don't doubt it with, with that defensive change we're going under. And you, that's, that's part of the reason why yeah. we blow leads in the fourth quarter because every we set it back in the same cover three every time. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to be cover three. It's, it's, well, uh, you know, good thing time. about this, the all-season boss man, you got to make the, the – the, get the right acquisitions. Yes. got to got to draft, and it's going to be a hard draft because not going to have a combine. Oh, yes. You know, the, the meetings and things are going to be different. So it makes it a little bit hard. It, you know, they're not going to be able to spend the time to get to know these dudes like, like they normally would. They just, Which I kind of like the fact that you're going to have to go off the tape. Listen, it, I don't need all of the hand sizes and I don't need the dudes to go out there and put tights on under arm and run around. And I don't need all that because that, they ain't football. I, I done seen plenty of shorts and t-shirts all American. I done seen plenty dude that could tear up drills all day long and look yeah. sweet. Look sweet, bro. But guess what? You don't play the game of football like that. Yeah, they're right. You know, so I want to see, take that tape. I want to see when the real bullets are flying, what the kids are made of. And then I can go to the coaches, college coaches, and say, okay, who is this kid? What's his work ethic? How is he in the classroom? How is he in the weight room? How? What kind of teammate? I can get all of that, but I got to have a keen uh, eagle, eagle's eye, right? Oh, yes. I got to have an eagle's eye and say, look at this film and say, this is the dude that I know yes. can play. Yes. I can find me some Devin Whites, brother. You got that right. Now, Corey, I, I got one more for you. What was your favorite moment playing in Atlanta? Uh, whether it be the Fulton County Stadium or the Georgia Dome, what's your favorite moment playing the Falcons here in Atlanta? Can I tell you something? That's one stadium that I've never played in. Oh, wow. You never played here? That I've never played in Atlanta. Wow. That's I mean, in all, almost a decade of football, that's one of the stadiums. I played at Carolina. I played at Clemson when the Carolina was playing at Clemson. I played all down 95 corridor. Wow. Um, Never played in the I, Dome or the I played in New Dome Orleans. <laughs> I played in the old Houston Astro Dome, <laughs> you know, but I I played at the old Coliseum in LA. I played in in, in, in Olympic Stadium in Berlin, but I've never played in Atlanta. Wow, that's rare. That, that's that's so crazy that you. But I've been to, I've been to that stadium, the old one and the new one, many times via following my son with Alabama, and I don't think I'm. We don't. I don't even believe the years that I, that we were there, we've ever lost in Atlanta. Wow. Now, Corey, tell your story. I grew up <laughs> two miles from that stadium. I grew up over there. So mm. I grew up at. So I'm a stone throw away. If I can, I can look at the dome from where I grew up at. So that's my place. So you know. So I yeah, grew that's up. a sweet place, man. So I know. And you know what's, what's crazy, Corey, is that living over there, I couldn't afford to go to a game, but I could always hear, hear the noise and watch it. Like we're right here in the shadows, right? Because that part of town is not the most rich part. It's Atlanta. It's not, as you know that. It's yeah, very, it's but, nice. I I enjoy going to games down at the, the the stadium, Mercedes Benz. Was, it's uh, amazing. It's an amazing venue to watch football, especially college football, which I've watched a lot of it uh, in Atlanta over the years. Um, and so, listen, man, one thing I know about ATL, 
they'll get behind the team if the team is doing this thing. Now I go back when it was Jamal and the Dirty Birds. Oh yeah, Deion Prime time. <laughs> yes. I, you know when they went to the Super Bowl with my boy Harold Green, my teammate for the Game Cops were running back. And they made that run to the last one they made with Matty Ice. And when that city is buzzing, when the dirt, when the birds are flying, that that city buzzes. <laughs> it buzzes, man. So I, I, because they're so passionate, I hope they get a chance to get back. I hope so too, man. I, I want to be able to go cover the team and I know we're gonna win. I expect us to lose every every game because when I go when I go cover the games, Corey, I'm not gonna lie to you. I expect us, us to lose. And that's not good. I said, how yeah. are we gonna lose today? <laughs> you know, that's, what, that's, <laughs> that's my mindset. How that's not good, lose? bro. Man, you're a believer. You gotta learn how to. The Bible says there's power and life. that's for you, boss, man. There's power and of life and death in your mouth. So. What you speak, what you speak can come to existence. So you had the, the power, the anointing to speak to them dry bones, to speak to them dead falcons down there and say, hey, rise up. Let's go get it. Rise so Start speaking positive, man. Change coming. Change coming. Hey, I'm taking it from the minister, Payne, Pastor Payne himself. <laughs> Change is coming, Atlanta. We're going to rise up in 2021. <laughs> God willing, let's rise up. <laughs> <laughs> rise up. Hey, hey, Corey, thank you for your time today, man. This has been fun. We'll do this again real soon. I enjoyed it. I really did. Anytime, bro. I love to break it up, break some bread with you, talk some about the Lord and football, my two favorite things, baby. Anytime. Hey, thank you so much, Corey. Have a great day, sir, and be safe, man. God bless you, brother. God bless you Be as well, well buddy.